unless indeed you are disqualified. That doesn't mean he doesn't live in you if you're disqualified. It means that if you don't know he lives in you, you fail the test. What's the test? Does Jesus live in me? I don't know. That's the one test you don't want to fail. It's the key to your victory. It's the key to your peace. It's the key to your sonship. He lives in me. If you say, I don't know if he lives in me, you're in the right place. You are. You're in the right place to hear that he indeed wants to live in you. What do we think salvation is? This is why I don't think salvation is just that moment when you, you say the sinner's prayer and you go fill out a card and everybody goes, what day were you saved on? I, I believe that we walk into faith. I've got people sitting right here who've never lifted their hand and said yes to Jesus. And they've, they've been here four weeks, five weeks in a row, and they've never made any kind of commitment to Christ. I had one come to me a few weeks ago. They've been there eight weeks. And the eighth week they came to me and said, today, today, I believe. That was their whole testimony. Eight weeks. Now you say, well, if he had died on the seventh week, he'd bust hell. See, I disagree. I believe that on the seventh week, he had just took another step closer. They keep coming back. You know why they keep coming back? Because there's a spark inside of there that goes, somebody cares for me. I'm going to go find out a little bit more about it. And then, see, but they ain't said the prayer yet. We haven't baptized him yet. Get off our religious high horse and just let Jesus save people and bless people, and move people by faith. They had enough faith to come back, take another baby step, take another baby step, and take another baby step. And then one day they go, you know what? I really do believe this. Well, they didn't just get transported over into the, into the next dimension in that moment. They just simply walked into another realm of faith. Yeah. They're not done. Yeah. That's right. They're just going to keep walking into more faith. But, you know, I really do believe that. Amen. We're still walking into more faith. We got so much songbook theology in the church, it's really messed us up. Because we got songs about the hour I first believed. So if you can't name the hour, you must not be a believer. And the reality is, it wasn't just an hour I first believed. I've been walking into this belief for a long, long time. Sometimes I walked the wrong way. For a long time. He never stopped loving me. I preached the wrong stuff. He never stopped loving me. And He never stopped talking to me. He never said, I'm not going to meet you in your prayer closet anymore because you're preaching a mixture of law. He never did that. He just kept giving me stuff. He kept trying to open my eyes to things and walk me into truth. But I'm so glad that the test that we undergo is to see whether Christ lives in us. It took me years to really pass that, own, that litmus test in my own heart. I do believe he lives in me. For the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image. I just, I want to, I want to, if the snake's lifted his head at all and making someone think that they're not qualified, then I want to cut his head off. For the law having a shadow of the good things to come and not the very image of those things can never with those same sacrifices which they offer continually year by year make those who approach perfect. Notice that the law cannot fix anybody. Everybody comes, offers their sacrifice. We're under the old covenant here. They could not be made to be perfect. Even though they kept offering sacrifices, what happened? It didn't fix them. I told you we would, we would cover this before we closed. It didn't fix them. They kept offering a lamb. It didn't fix them. Was the lamb good? Was the offerer good? But the, even though the lamb was good, it didn't fix the problem. It had a shadow of good things, but it couldn't fix them. Verse 2. And here, and, and here we'll bring it to a close. For then would they not have ceased to be offered? Simple question. If they felt better about themselves, wouldn't they just quit offering up the sacrifices? For the worshipers, once purified, please catch this. I cannot overemphasize what I'm about to say. I cannot overemphasize it and damage it. Impossible. I'm going to read it wrong on purpose. Because it's been quoted wrong and we've believed it wrong. If the worshipers, once they were pure, they would have never sinned again. Not what it says. It says if the worshipers, once pure, they would have never had consciousness of sin again. What's the difference? Do they still fail? Sometimes. Sometimes. Some grace preachers seem like we're scared to say that. Yeah. Still fail. We're human. We're dressed in an earth suit with a spirit man inside of us that's going to live forever, but 
we mess up. The difference under a new covenant is our consciousness is not on our failures. Our consciousness is on the Christ in us.